Hey guys, we've got a nice video here for you about animation blending. Um, so I've got my play here. This is the animated first person controller. And he's just idling away as you can see. Um, you know, he's doing alright. Now I've got a lot of animations that I wanted to have in my game. And the problem with if uh, if then else statements um, is you really can't there's so many different combinations of one animation to the next it's very hard to uh, code that in uh, so I'll just quickly show you we've got quite a lot of stuff happening here um, there's lots of animations going on I've got stand walk run crouch crouch walk jump uh, I've got three different idols actually I think it might even be four climb sit aim, shoot, there might even be other animations. Now I need to blend between animations. Just coding that directly uh, with uh, if you know if your input equals this uh, it's actually just it becomes ridiculously long and, and complex and you, you always miss stuff. So the best way animation blending is to just have an array of data and look up the, uh, the transition you want. So firstly there's the transition from one animation to the next uh, so it's smooth, it blends from that that position of the, the character's body to the next, the start of it. And then once that's uh, blended, then the ongoing uh, animation blending of that actual animation itself is often different to the blending. So for example, you usually want a blending higher than the ongoing um, blending. So, so initial blending, from a transition blending we'll call it, is you know something like three, four, five hundred milliseconds, uh, but ongoing something like run, it doesn't actually need any. It's uh, the run has a full, it has all the animations in it. So I just I've just put this basic like fifty milliseconds, or you could probably do ten. You can't actually put zero because it'll actually then default back to the full amount, uh, like three hundred or whatever it is. Uh, so you could have something in there above zero, but so yeah, so it's got its transition animation blending and then the ongoing uh, animation blending so the best way to do it I found is using an array you look up the data so um, so you've got the lookup so this is the transition between one animation to the next it looks up that figure it gets the animation to play uh, is it, it fix up the looping yes or no the initial blend and then the uh, the final blend uh, after that. So that's just a big array of data that I've basically created. It's, it took a little while, but it wasn't that, that hard. Um, so there's a lot of data in there. When you're blending, um, where is it? Okay, so every 100 milliseconds. Um, notice I'm doing this in Notepad++. It's actually a very good program. Uh, it's way better than just coding it directly in CopyCube. I wouldn't don't like to use that method anymore. It's too slow, has too many problems, and um, yeah, it won't show you the problem until you run the code. Whereas this will. So you've got your, your brackets. So you've got red and red. It's this is way better this way. You can see the start and end of the brackets uh, if else statements. Um, all right. So what it does is update the animation to uh, based on what the input of the the, the player, the, the, the what you want it to do. And if it's different to the existing animation from then it will then it will transition. It'll just look up that table uh, uh, of data. So there's my animations array here, and it'll just update the uh, the stuff here and a smooth transition. And it's just very easy. If it's not smooth or whatever you know, modify, you just simply change one of the numbers in the array. It's very simple. Uh, I found this is the best way to do it. It's the fastest way too. So let me just show you a picture. If you're thinking switch statements are faster, no, they're not, generally speaking. Here's a switch statement in red. In the beginning, a small amount of switch statements is a little bit quicker than the green is array lookup, slightly quicker. That's the time in milliseconds. Uh, but on the whole scheme of things, an array lookup is always going to be the fastest for the most part. See that? It's always consistent, very quick. Uh, a switch statement, if you add too many statements in, it becomes slow. Uh, and there's the if statements. So you're doing a lot of if statements, that's slower as well. So it's probably the slowest. And then it's the switch statement, and then it's the array is the quickest on the, on the whole scheme of things. So there you go. So this is the best way to do it. Um, you blend, uh, just look up an array uh, 
you know, in the table and go from there. Uh, so I've got a lot of animations happening at the moment. I've got the uh, walk cycle, as you can see, watch the shadow. I've got the jump happening. I've also got surfaces walking, like on top of these. Uh, Yeah, so, and I've got three different um, land impact animations, basic, medium, and high. And high. Um, so I'll just go for a bit of a run here. Watch the, sh you can watch the shadow if you want. That's, that's the second animation. Uh, yeah, so I'm picking up the fall damage, the height from each one. Those little black lines, don't worry about that for now, that's the actual extent of the, I believe that's the um, collision, collide when move behaviour, that's actually what you're looking at. Um, yeah, I'll have to make it a bit smaller so you can't see it. So basically I make it bigger so that when you're on a high angle, it'll actually drop it off the edge. Like that. Yeah, so that works quite well. Um, from a uh, collision point of view, if you make it the the X and the Z bigger, you know normally I have it like four four nine four or something, but um, if you make it a bit bigger, I'm pro uh, I'll probably make it smaller because you're seeing these little black lines, which is a bit silly, isn't it? Um, for some reason they're not invisible. Um, anyway, but. Uh, so there's our player. You notice how his animation walk speed changes according to the angle. It's not it's not perfect, uh, but it does work a little bit. Just so that the, the head bobbing and the movement of the camera sort of sort of coincides with the uh, player speed. Yeah. So I think we're uh, we're going to do a uh, falling Olympics. I think. Yeah, so let's let's go for the ultimate. Go for the gusto. Uh, so there's you've seen the first and the second uh, animation uh, fall animation. Sorry, impact animation. So you watch your shadow. That's the that's just the basic one. The, there's a slightly intermediate one. We'll go for the gusto. Eh, I think. What do you reckon? See how hard we can go. At. See if he's he's got the guts to go for the gusto. Hmm? What about up here? What's up here? Oh, that looks interesting. Hmm. Nice. Okay. Got some guts. Alright, let's give it a bell. See if we can make it. <laughs> yeah, okay, there's a slight problem with the uh, seeing through the player there. I'll uh, have to change the camera position, but yeah, that's basically, um, yeah, got Crouch walk. Crouch. So crouching, he's just leaping a little bit of movement. Oh, that's interesting, didn't loop, but I'll have to change that. Um, now that shakes because it's going downhill. That's the game engine and then the collide behavior with the gravity. I'll have to work some solution out for that. But, um, yeah, so so you got animation blending between uh, high and low. Notice, uh, so from standing, I'm blending into the crouch position. Um, so at the start of the crouch position, which actually um, uh, which is actually just the final position. You don't need the whole animation. For example, that takes you from standing all the way to the bottom. This is just purely. I only need the end position. I just need the end position, then I can blend the whole thing and it makes it smoother that way rather than what used to happen, it was a lot more jerky as it was going down. But now I just blend the whole thing into the final position. You only need the final position and I might unselect the crouch button. It just returns uh, back purely by uh, blending as well. So that's all blended. That's not an animation, the up and down movement. It's a lot smoother that way actually, so I think that's a better way to go. Um, you know, the walking sounds along with the, 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 the feet, yeah, it's not a perfect match, um, but, you know, it's something. 
Uh, it's going to be a bit of work, but uh, we'll get there. So we got his run movement, blending to the walk. Yeah, so yeah, it seems alright. Yeah, so yeah, so that's all that works, and um, got my uh, under under surface. Little thing I like working as well. It's, it's a metal plane underneath it. Just tells me to change the sound. Yeah, so that's all working. Um, so that's the main thing I want to show you that you just blend between um, animations. So the player itself. Um, crouch. Is. Uh, so, if we, so you just need the final position there, and it blends all the way through to the end. So, I'll show you that. Yeah. So when I'm when I'm blending uh, for the crouch, it only blends from where whatever whatever animation you're currently doing, which could be pretty much anything, into the crouch position. So you better just to just to make it a lot easier for yourself and instead of programming every single change in just uh, just blend blend the position blend the change itself so that's blended down and blended back up again uh, so that's the best way use a little blending as much as possible it's actually pretty good so yeah um, yeah so that's pretty much it um, yeah so I've added a lot of stuff to this particular bit of adjustment in my game at the moment. As you can see, when you impact the ground, the, the, the speed will change a little bit, animations will change, different sounds will play accordingly. It uh, needs a bit of work, but this is the basic uh, thing I've been working on the last couple of months, actually. <laughs> yeah, so it's not too bad. I think it's a lot of a big improvement on the old character controller, um, which was just very flat, no head bombing at all. This is a lot more, I would say, more of like a dynamic changing all the time. It's cool. Yeah, I think it's really good. And I tried to, the default import for FBX uh, animations is 300 frames a second in Coffee Cube. I found that changing it to make it a lower figure like 30 or 60 or whatever it is, it cuts out animations. Using Blender it was cutting out animations so it was no longer as smooth as it was. Um, so I just leave it at 300 as frames per second not impacted uh, 62 you can see up the top left 62 every time it goes green it's updating uh, flashes green there um, every uh, two and a, uh, was it yeah two and a half seconds it's updating um, yeah so uh, yeah it's a more accurate count on the frames per second I, I do I count the number of frames within that two and a half second gap and then it works out the uh, calculate the, the frames per second that way um, it's more accurate than uh, previous frame uh, frame per second meters yeah so I might make this collision box a bit smaller so you, what you can do is if you the good thing about it will go down a little while and then stop if it's not too much of an angle so that's quite quite good <coughs> Yeah, so I hope you like that. So uh, all animations, if you're having a ton of different ones, just use an array, look it up, and blend between the, between them. And then once they're blended, then just change the blending back to the default. Uh, you know, ongoing and uh, animation blending, if you like. So for running and walking, it's like 50 milliseconds. Doesn't really need any. Um, but to blend, yeah, you want about three three to six hundred milliseconds, something like that. Yeah, so, yeah, hope you like that. Yeah, so, at least we made the uh, Fall Olympics. I think we got gold. Yep, no worries. Cheers.